What's up guys, my name is Brandon and welcome back to Apple Weekly. In this episode, we're going to discuss even more iOS 17 public beta features and changes. We're gonna talk about why the iPhone will never have a user replaceable battery, a massive new iMac coming, the future of CarPlay is already here, a crazy AirTag story, and much more. And as always, if you wanna stay updated with all things Apple, click that subscribe button down below and don't forget to subscribe to the Apple Den newsletter, also linked in the description below. Okay, so let's start off by talking about even more iOS 17 features and changes because we actually got a few new features in the public beta of iOS 17. Now, let me just quickly address that if you had the developer beta three installed, of course, you're not gonna see the public beta because they are the exact same build. Now, if you wanna switch over to the public beta from the developer beta, I did make a video specifically showing you how to do that. That will be linked down in the description below. But anyways, Let's talk about some of these new features. So the first thing I wanna talk about is inside of Safari. So if we head into our Safari here, and if we go to a web page, we're just gonna to go to apple.com, for example. Now, if we take a screenshot, this is nothing new, but if we take a screenshot right here, you will notice that we have full page. Again, that's nothing new. We've been able to take full page screenshots for a while, but all along, it was kind of this like scrolly thing right here, and we would have to kind of crop it, and that was the end of it. Well, now in iOS 17, if you tap on done, you will notice that we have save to photos. Before, we were only able to save the PDF to files or just pick a specific part of the web page to screenshot over here on the right. And if we actually click on save to photos, you will notice that we have the full page here in our photos application, and it's not a PDF file, it's an actual JPEG. Also also new in iOS 17 public beta is better dual SIM support. So you can now do multiple things with dual SIM on iOS 17. So you can sort messages based on the SIM. You can separate ringtones for each SIM. So this is something that's been long requested where you can have a separate default ringtone for each SIM. You can now do that in iOS 17. And you could also choose which SIM card you want to use when calling back an unknown number. So all of those have been added here in iOS 17. Shout out to TechCrunch for breaking that news. And speaking of unknown callers and unknown senders, now on iPad OS 17, you're able to filter messages by known and unknown senders. So before that was only on iOS 17, but now you can do that on iPad OS 17 as well. In the phone application under recent, you can now have up to 2000 recent calls. So this is going to be phone calls, FaceTime calls, and WhatsApp calls all here within the recent. You can have up to 2000 of them. Also, so according to TechCrunch, you can now sign in to your Apple ID using your phone number instead of an email ID. So instead of using like your actual, you know, email address that you log into your Apple ID with, you can now log in with just your phone number that's associated with that Apple ID. In the standby mode, if you go over to this really cool modular clock, you can now see we have a dual tone option. So you can have two tone clocks. So you can see I have beta two of iOS 17 on the left, beta three right here on the right. And I didn't have those options before, but now I do in beta three, AKA the iOS 17 public beta. Also this week, we got a new beta update for the AirPods. And I've been testing out the new beta on my AirPods Pro second generation with the new adaptive audio feature. And it seems to have improved quite a bit because I don't have the volume going up and down randomly nearly as much as I did previously on the first beta for the AirPods for iOS 17. So if you had that issue on the AirPods Pro 2, just know that this new beta should fix that. And then as far as bugs go, I did wanna mention the keyboard bug because that seems to be by far the most popular bug that you guys are facing. I was facing it a lot in beta two. It drove me absolutely crazy, especially here in the spotlight search. But now in beta three and in the public beta for iOS 17, the keyboard bug has been fixed by like, I would say 90%. It still happens happens to me occasionally, but it's not a daily occurrence anymore. I notice it mainly happening inside of the messages application. It would just randomly, you know, not pop up. It would, it would imitate like the animation for it popping up, but it would just be nothing there. And I would have to force close out of the messages app, go back in there, and then it would reappear. But thankfully it's not happened for spotlight search. It is still a little bit slow. Sometimes when I pull down for spotlight search, the keyboard just lags and eventually comes up. So still many issues with the keyboard, but it does seem to be on the right track. It is getting better. And another big issue I'm having is AirDrop. Every time I have two phones even somewhat close together, 
they try to airdrop each other. Like, I don't know if it's for the contact information. Sometimes it's for a file. When I have a photo opened up, it just seems to be triggering way too often. I've turned off like every setting to try to reduce this, but it still does it on a consistent basis. Now I will say this also has gotten better. It does not happen as frequently as in beta one, especially where just like, I couldn't even have my phones even on the same desk, but now in the public beta, it's not as bad, but it is still an issue. I wish there was a way to just completely turn that off, but I've not been able to find out how because I've turned off airdrop I've turned off Bluetooth I've turned off you know all of that and it still happens I will say also that the weather widget as you can see right here right on cue is still not working it just kind of lags there you go it showed up now but you know a lot of times it will just simply not show up ever same with the sleep widget sometimes I just will not see you know how much sleep I got the previous night until maybe like 5 p.m you know later that day it takes hours and hours for it to actually show up so still a lot of issues with widgets as well just mainly not appearing but as far as performance overall goes I really don't have a ton of issues I mean I do have the UI bugs like I mentioned but those are not necessarily performance based you know they're just more UI based just bugs that you get with a beta but overall raw performance I really don't have any complaints like it's not as fast especially with the keyboard you know and things like that it's not as fast as iOS 16 I am still having random resprings which affects the performance it heats up a little bit which does affect the performance but it's a beta it's still an early beta so I would expect this to keep improving but so far it's really not nearly as bad as iOS 16 or iOS 15 in my opinion at this stage but as far as the battery life goes of course this is where I'm still having issues so I'm gonna pull up my main device here my iPhone 14 Pro and we're gonna go to my battery section I've actually not even been checking this for like the past week so you're gonna see this at the same time as me so my last 24 hours you know, eight hours of screen active time, 455 of screen idle time. And look at that, Twitter is taking up the most of my battery usage. That's quite a flip from when Threads was taking that top spot. But anyway, if we take a look at the last 10 days here, you can see, looks like battery life is improving, but it's still not great. I feel like a broken record saying this, but I do just need to say it in case you're watching this for the first time, last 10 days, I mean, it does seem to be improving in terms of battery life. I've noticed it as well without even looking at the charts. So I will say battery life is definitely to like probably at least like 40 to 50% better than it was on betas one and two, which is a massive improvement. I could not get through even the afternoon without my battery draining to like, you know, 10%. So now it is much, much better. Still not on par with iOS 16. I don't think we're gonna get there until, you know, probably at least like beta six or seven. So we're still a ways away from that. But uh, yeah, looks good for battery life. Let me know what you guys are experiencing as well. Let me know in a comment down below, you know, if your battery life is good or bad here on this public beta, AKA beta three. Now also this past week, Apple did release iOS security response update 16.5.1 C and Mac OS Ventura 13.4.1 C. And this was addressed or this was released to address the actively exploited bug and the safari issue that affected the a version so i talked about this on twitter it's quite confusing so apple released the original rapid security response update and then it had issues with safari loading web pages so they had to pull that update that same day they skipped a day and then the next day after they released a c version of that same rapid security response update and all it did was address the safari issues and of course patch that webkit bug both for ios and for mac os so definitely something you want to install if you're still on iOS 16 and you're not on the betas. But anyways, let's move on to what to expect next from Apple. So today is going to be July 15th that I post this video. And next week on the week of July 17th is when I would expect to see iOS 17 beta four for registered developers. So I would expect to see that on the 18th or the 19th. The public beta did release on a Wednesday, so we could see it on the 19th. Kind of depends, Apple could release it at any point next week and then I would not expect the public beta to come until later on that week if not the full following week on the week of the 24th and again it's most likely going to be the exact same build and then as far as iOS 16 iOS 16.6 RC should be coming next week most likely on Monday or Tuesday it could come on the same day as iOS 17 we will see and that's going to be the release candidate build the final version for developers and the final public release will come the week after so the week of the 24th fourth is when we should see iOS 16.6 released to the general public for everybody who is not on iOS 17 
beta. Okay, so now I want to discuss some additional iOS related news before the main news section of this episode. And the first thing I want to talk about are the new emojis, a first look at the new emoji that are coming to iOS 17 next year. So you can see these are the emoji that we're seeing here. And obviously, they're not going to look this bad. They always look better once they're actually released, you know, on the iPhone. But this is our first look at what we could expect to come in a later version of iOS 17. Now, keep in mind with iOS 16, we didn't get the new emojis until 16.4 in March. So we may be waiting until spring of next year before we actually see these emojis on our iPhones. Now we need to talk about the future of CarPlay and how it's already here right now, even on iOS 16, because Porsche just released an update to their My Porsche app and it adds a new layer to CarPlay that we've not seen before. And with this application, you're gonna be able to do all of these functions via CarPlay. You're gonna be able to adjust the climate control, the ambient lighting. You're gonna be able to see the state of charge of the vehicle's battery, especially if it's like an EV. You're gonna be able to show an image of your car, like the model of your car, like Tesla does. You can adjust the audio settings, such as sound profiles and and changing radio stations and all of these functions can be combined into wellness modes such as relax warm up and refresh using quick actions and carplay and the best thing about all of this is that you can control these functions via siri so you can adjust like your you know climate control you can adjust your lighting all via siri like you're in a smart home that's just awesome and even if you're not a porsche owner this is exciting because it shows you the possibilities of what a developer can put on top of carplay like that layer on top of carplay can actually control vehicle functions so you better believe that other manufacturers are going to start copying porsche which is exciting and keep in mind this is not the next generation of carplay that we've seen demoed like last year that's still coming hopefully later this year this is just what's right now like this is not the next gen carplay this is right now on even ios 16. and speaking of cars teslas might be getting airplay support so there was references to airplay in the code of the most recent tesla software update hinting that this feature might be coming pretty soon. Now we already have Apple Music support on the Tesla infotainment screen, but having AirPlay would allow us to stream audio or even stream video potentially to the Tesla infotainment screen via AirPlay, like a native feature with the iPhone, which would be awesome. Also this past week, Apple launched Tap to Pay in the United Kingdom. And this is a feature of course, where you can tap basically iPhone to iPhone to conduct a transaction without the need of a square reader that goes in the bottom or like any type of other POS system. I use this feature all the time here in the US. Tap to Pay is awesome. So good news for the UK. Also, this feature, Tap to Pay, is coming to Brazil next. Now, I did also want to mention a couple of things related to macOS. And the first one has to do with the new macOS Sonoma software and a massive feature that is coming to this update in September. And that is that you're going to be able to use the password manager, the built-in iCloud keychain, for third-party browsers. We're talking about Google Chrome, talking about Brave browser, all of those, you're gonna be able to use you know, the iCloud keychain, the password manager, just like you do in Safari in those third-party browsers. So that's a big deal. And then also something I found pretty funny and really just a testament to how Apple just keeps up with even old discontinued products. They just released this past week, macOS Ventura 13.5 to fix an issue with the iPod shuffle and a syncing bug that it had. And this comes like literally six years after that device was discontinued, maybe even more than six years. I forgot even when the iPod Shuffle got discontinued, but it's been a long time and Apple still pushes out software updates to fix an issue with an old discontinued product. I mean, literally only Apple could do that. All right, so now let's move on to the latest Apple news. Okay, so if you subscribe to the Apple Den, you know that a couple of weeks ago, we talked about a big like 30 plus inch iMac coming soon. Well, now Mark Gurman at Bloomberg has kind of specified what he means by this. And it looks like that the new iMac that's coming will be around around 32 inches in size. That's the same size as the Pro Display XDR from 2019, which was a $5,000 monitor, by the way. And just for reference, the studio display is 27 inches. So it's going to be a good bit bigger than even the studio display. And this is going to be a big jump. 32 inches is a big jump from 24 inches, because right now we only have the 24 inch iMac since the 27 inch iMac and iMac Pro got discontinued. We only have the 24 inch. So it's going to be a big 
you know, size difference between those two and probably a big price difference as well. Now he does say that this large iMac is still in early development and that we should not expect it until 2024 or 2025. But something coming before 2024 or 2025 is the iPhone 15 coming later this year. And while this iPhone is not going to have a user replaceable battery, it's gonna have a built-in battery just like all the other iPhones, future iPhones might have user replaceable batteries because the EU is going to require that. At least that's what speculation has said for the past couple of months, but that's not really true. You see, the EU recently voted to adopt a new proposed battery legislation that would force phone makers to make batteries easier to replace, which meant that they would be easier to recycle. Now that law states that customers should be able to do the replacement themselves with regular tools. And while this led to a lot of speculation that the EU is going to force Apple to create iPhones with easy to replace batteries, that might never be the case because according to Win Future, the regulations have exemptions in place that will allow phone makers to continue selling devices with built-in batteries as long as they fall under one of these two categories. So the first exemption is waterproof devices. So waterproof devices are not going to have to have a user replaceable battery for obvious reasons. And then the second exemption is for built-in batteries of high quality. And they specify high quality saying that the battery should still have 83% battery health after 500 cycles or 80% battery health after 1000 cycles. Now, Apple does have until 2027 to comply with the new EU battery laws. So I would expect them to make major advancements and major changes to the battery just to make sure they're not even like on the edge because right now they're right at that, you know, second exemption. So I would expect the battery life to get better for sure with the iPhone just so they can avoid any type of issue with this new EU legislation, which is a win for us, a big win for us as the consumers. So remember a couple of weeks ago when I talked about the Apple Watch Ultra and how I don't really see the point of that coming so soon, just one year after. And also I don't understand the logistics side of it. Well, now we might have a reason that Apple is going to be pushing out an Apple Watch Ultra second gen so soon after the first gen. And this comes from Ming-Chi Kuo. He just published a new report and it says this, Apple is actively adopting 3D printed technology and it is expected that some of the titanium mechanical parts of the new Apple Watch Ultra will be made by 3D printing. Although currently the mechanical parts made by 3D printing still have to go through the CNC process for back-end processes, it can still improve the production time and reduce the production cost. And that last sentence is key because if the production costs are down, Apple may reduce the price of the Apple Watch Ultra as well because that was a big, you know, a lot of people didn't want to pay, you know, so much for an Apple Watch when the first Apple Watch Ultra came out. So if they can get that cheaper and also reduce, you know, lead times because they can produce them faster, I think the Apple Watch Ultra 2 is going to sell like in like an insane amount, even more than the first generation. So now I'm starting to see Apple's plan with this Apple Watch Ultra. And then finally, just as tradition, another crazy AirTag story. And this one is related to golf. A golf club in Arizona was robbed twice in the past few months, and the thief made off with thousands of dollars worth of golf clubs. But what he didn't know is that two of the bags that he stole were not only full of clubs, but they also had an AirTag in them. This AirTag was put in there by the manager of the golf club, and he actually tracked them down. He tracked down the car full of stolen golf clubs and bags, and then he alerted the police and they arrested the man who is now facing felony charges. So I wanted to mention this one in this episode because that's something new. I've seen so many AirTag stories. You guys have heard so many AirTag stories. That's the first one I've heard about a golf thief getting caught based on or because of an AirTag, which by the way, I wanted to mention as well as a side note, but still related. AirTags just went on sale for Prime Day. If you have not picked up AirTags yet, put them in everything, especially if somebody has stolen something multiple times throw an air tag in there most of the thieves are not really you know tech savvy and they won't understand what that thing is so get air tags protect your belongings but anyways guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you did i would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up also make sure to subscribe by clicking that subscribe button down below if you want to see more ios 17 and upcoming iphone 15 videos in the near future also check out the apple den newsletter link down in the description below and i will see you guys soon